Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Just Notebook Review. I'm your host, Joel Michael. What we're doing today is we're playing games with the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14. I just reviewed it. You can click right up here. Right up here <laughs> to see it. The review, that is. And this is the base model. You can get the ROG Zephyrus with some pretty impressive specs. This is not one of those impressive spec sheet models. This is the base model, as cheap as you can get, I think, in the States. I think it has a Ryzen 5 available. Eh, maybe. Yes, we scored. This only has the Ryzen 7. It's available with a Ryzen 9, though. So this one, this particular model, has the Ryzen 7 4800HS CPU, uh, the GTX 1650 NVIDIA GPU with 4 gigs, of GDDR6 VRAM and a 60 Hertz screen. It is available with a 120 Hertz screen. This is only 60 Hertz. Man, they're ahead of us. So, because it's only a 60 Hertz screen, we are using VSync and lowering our FPS cap to just 60 using NVIDIA's control panel. You can do that now. It's awesome and wonderful. And why are we doing that? Well, don't we want to know how many frames per second the GTX 1650 can push in case we want to hook it up to an external monitor? Yes, that is important to know. I will cover that later. This video is all about what the gaming experience is like on the laptop itself, and lowering the frame rate to just 60 means that our temps will stay as low as they can. And right now we're pray praying, <laughs> well, we're kind of praying because we're behind, but we are playing Rocket League, and we are only getting seven, up to 75 degrees Celsius for our CPU temps, which is very good, very healthy. I can keep, we can, the, the laptop can do this for forever and a half. And I, 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 maybe the fans are wrong? I don't know, I can't tell, because the speakers, which are very good on this laptop, are way, way louder than the fans themselves. So, yar. This is uh, very enjoyable, very nice. Uh, at least at 60 hertz it is. Uh, because, obviously, I'm used to playing this game at 120. Am I, do I feel like I'm missing out on anything, though? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I definitely do feel like I'm missing out on a high refresh rate uh, uh, game experience. So, but, you know, for a 60 hertz uh, monitor, this is just fine. This is just fine. Uh, because it's constant 60 frames per second all the time. And that is, and I love having a very smooth, very consistent gameplay experience. I value that more than a high refresh rate display uh, with a frame rate that's kind of jittery. Like if it's if it's a 120 hertz display and your frame rate's sitting at around 100 FPS and it's fluctuating from 100 to like 120 between there, it, I just I don't like it. I would rather have a constant smooth 60 frames per second than that. Come on, buddy. Let's get it in. Keep it in the air. Keep it in the air. Aww. Anyway, so that was Rocket League with the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14. Let's move on to the next game. Next up is Control. This game came out a year or two ago. I don't know. We're in the medium details preset. We're just kind of running around right now, and we're getting less than 50 frames per second, and it is noticeable. It's definitely lagging our inputs as well, but you know what? Input lag isn't as obvious with a controller, so if you can feel input lag, probably means you're using the mouse and keyboard and not the controller. So, just wandering around these hallways, not even encountering any enemies. I don't think we're going to see 60 frames per second anytime soon, as I say. Even looking at a wall, there we go, there's 60 FPS. Oh, here's a fight. Frame rates are... Oh, am I going to go down below 40? I don't know. Oh, there we go. Right, I'm down below 40. So here we are now in the same room with the same enemies in low details. This is the low details preset. 
temperatures are about the same, hovering just below 80, but our frames per second are staying at a constant 60 frames per second. Hey, I think our fans are starting to kick in now. You probably can't hear it all that well in the video, though, because... What can I throw at these dudes? Come on. There we go. Oh, yeah. Eat lead! What? What? Come on. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want to do? Huh? Yeah. Uh, I think the trick there was... You can probably get away with a little bit more stuff to turn up if you put the, the volumetric lighting on low. Because if you do the, just the medium, or the, just the low quality preset... Oh yes, the screen space reflections quality still goes to medium. I think if you set that to low, that actually helps out a lot. And then you can crank up a couple other stuff, uh, like the MSAA, maybe the foliage quality can go back up to medium. Um, and texture filtering can probably just go back up to high, because, you know, you have four gigs of GDDR6 VRAM in this thing. It's gotta be good for something, man. Hey, let's move on to another game. I don't know why I always have to play Diablo 3 on these videos. It's like a mental block thing, I guess. But here we are in Diablo. We've got my Demon Hunter out and all the details turned up to maximum. We're going to see just how well this game plays and in what kind of details. And how loud it gets. Apparently it gets pretty loud. I've been playing on my Witch Doctor for so long, I don't even know if I remember how to play my Demon Hunter. I seem to remember something about needing to... I don't know. How's the frame rate going? A frame rate still... That is so loud! This laptop, I'm turning the... I have to turn the volume down in order to hear myself think! It's so loud, which is a blessing. I mean, you know, hey, I would rather have speakers that are too loud that you have to turn down than have speakers that are too quiet and the fan noise is the loudest thing about a laptop. The speakers on this G14 are just incredible. I love it. I just, I love it. And our temperatures are doing pretty well as well. I mean, they're staying below 80 frames per second so far. And that is good. That's really, really good. Another thing that I did point out in my review is that the ghosting of the monitor, you know, how, how blurry the picture is when things are scrolling, this is the game to pick up how bad ghosting is. And if you're... Well, you probably can't see it in the video, but the, the scrolling text is actually not half bad. I mean, it's not perfect, obviously. You need a really high refresh rate monitor in order to get it to be crystal clear when the text is scrolling back and forth. Or use a CRT monitor. CRT monitors, crystal clear, super perfect, but also super old and super unavailable. And that's unfortunate these days. So this is Diablo 3. Let's move on to the next game. How am I doing? Am I shooting at anything right now? I don't think so. But, oh, everything's dead. Next up is Forza Horizon 4. Starting this race event. This is different than the graphic settings that I used for my review. You see, in my review, everything was at ultra. I didn't realize that the detail levels, in some cases, can go up to extreme so if there is an extreme setting for that particular detail level, that is what it is. And our frame rates, you can't see right now because uh, MSI Afterburner doesn't quite work with this game. And also, uh, neither does anything else, really. I don't think... Well, I think Fraps would work. But you're just going to have to see the frame rates on the video, uh, or see the frame rate as it is on the video without any numbers, and take my word for it, and we are in sub-60 right now. We're at like mid-50s, 
low 50s. I haven't seen it dip down below 50 frames per second, but you know what? Uh, overall, it's, it's smooth. It's kind of smooth. I don't know. I can definitely tell how the frame rate dips, so it's not that fantastic. Let us put everything back down to just ultra and see if it gives us that super smooth 60 frames per second that we saw during the uh, review of this laptop. Okay, if it was an extreme detail, it is now down to just ultra. And we are getting a super smooth 60 frames per second now. I did see it dip a little bit at the very beginning, like before the, the uh, green flag went down, but... For the most part, now we are at super smooth 60 frames per second. Again, ultra details, not extreme, but ultra. This is super smooth and super fun to play. And it just plain works. Even with all these cars populating on the screen, I'm still getting a super smooth 60 frames per second. All right, well this is enough for Forza Motorsport. Motorsport, I keep on wanting to call it Forza. It's not Motorsport. This is enough for Forza Horizon 4. Let's move on to the next game. My friends, it is time. It is time for Valheim. Yes, this is a not a brand new game, but it's not even out yet, technically. But it sold like, what, four or six million copies? I don't know. So I guess it's pretty popular. When we're inside and we're taking a look at a lot of details, the frame rate kind of dips. And that's just a, an unavoidable consequence of installing and running Valheim. Now if you take a look at this, wow, you can see so easily the pop-in for the textures on the floorboards. Ugh, that's just, I mean, you have a gamer-centric GPU. You, you gotta be able to play the game at least a little bit better than that, right? It's funny because now that I'm outside, I can't notice like texture pop in as much, but it does look kind of bland. Wow, that already looks so much better. And at this time of day, there are more intensive times of day because the shadows, when the shadows are long, they're harder to calculate. But we are getting 60 frames per second to boot outside of the house. Now let's see what happens when we go inside the house. Wow, okay, we're dipping quite a bit, but you know what? Wow, okay, we're getting below 40 frames per second. On my desktop, we'll get about a little bit above 40 right here, honestly, in this house. But now we can see that the textures don't pop in on the floorboards, but the lighting does pop in, like the lighting on that bench right there. And okay, so the textures and the polygons do pop in a little bit. The frame rate here looks pretty good, but like I said before, certain times of day are more intensive than others because the shadows take more processing power when they're longer. And at this time of day, the shadows aren't very long. So let's see if we can, first of all, find some shelter here so that I'm not accosted by something creepy crawly while I'm trying to change my detail shutters here. Well, we're gonna see just what our frame rate turns into a max details in the middle of a swamp biome. Obviously, it is lower than what it was before, but it does look a lot prettier. I can see that, ooh, yeah. yeah I, I turned on the depth of field, so that helps out quite a bit as far as making the game more beautiful. And damn it, skeletons die and go away. I'm running in the wrong direction. This is very playable, but Valheim in itself is a really playable game in low frame rates. Especially when they are like, you know, like they are right now, like sub 50. So this is a pretty good indication of how Valheim plays on the Asus Zephyrus ROG G14 with the GTX 1650 GPU. Let's move on to something else. So, here we are in Star Wars Rogue Squadron. No, <laughs> Star Wars Squadrons. And uh, I just now figured out how to get to maximum speed, so <laughs> now I can actually progress through the game. This is Ultra Details 1080p V-Sync is... I think V-Sync is actually off now, but <laughs> whatever. We're getting a super smooth 60 frames per second. And the game looks and plays 
beautifully. I don't know what Valheim's problem is that it can't do this, but, you know, whatever. Nobody's perfect. Okay, let's see if our frame rates dip here. We're still in ultra details. This should be good. Whoa. Damn it, why did you go and get yourself killed by following my orders? No, oh, list lazily to the left, list lazily to the left. <laughs> hey, that looks pretty good. That worked out all right. And our frame rate is still at 60 frames per second. I can dig it. So this is Star Wars Squadrons on the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14. Runs pretty well. Hey, let's move on to the next game. Rise of the Tomb Raider is next, because that's just the natural order of things around here. We just crash-landed in the middle of the Amazon, and our detail levels are set to high. The high details preset with V-Sync on, of course. We're getting 60 frames per second at this point, which is pretty good. I did see a couple dips during the cutscenes, but for the most part, the cutscenes were very, very smooth. Yes, this is probably the detail settings that I would use to play this game at all time. And there goes a little monkey. <laughs> now we're looking at a vista. Our frame rate's going... Oh. Someone's over there. Someone's over there. We have to go to them. So let's see what our frame rate is at now. 55. Is it jarring? It's not incredibly jarring, but it's definitely less than 60. Laura destroying the Amazon jungle. Ooh. Take those. Oh, I don't take the eggs, I take the feathers? Come on, Laura. You gotta eat. Girls gotta eat. This does not change my opinion. I would still play the game at this detail level on this laptop. Because it's just... It just looks too good. Oh, hey, look, there's something over there. Oh, she's looking up here. Oh, okay. So that's Rise of the Tomb Raider, let's move on to something else. Next up is Witcher 3, we're just going to do my infamous demo run here. This is high details and high post-processing. Remember for Witcher 3 there's two, count them, two different menus there. And the both of them are set to high. Now the regular details menu can do ultra, while the post-processing can also do, well, I, no, details go to high preset, and then post-processing can go to ultra. So right now they're both in high. And we're doing really, really good. Of course, 60 FPS cap, because we're playing on the laptop itself. Remember, I'm going to do a video later to see how high we can fly with this laptop. Uh, running through Novigrad is easily the most intensive part of the game. If I go outside of Novigrad, obviously it's still going to go at 60 frames per second at all times. Now we're outside of the city, and of course, like I said, yeah, we're definitely going to be at 60 frames per second at all times. Is this going to get a video file pass for moving around? Yeah, that is, eh, it kind of jerks up every once in a while. So it's not a super smooth 60 frames per second, but I think that comes down to the NVIDIA control panel settings themselves. Maybe if you set the NVIDIA control panel to be unbridled and then use Witcher 3's built-in 60 frames per second limiter, I think that would go a little bit better. So let's go ahead and pump up the details to maximum to see what Witcher 3 looks like then. I was mistaken about the graphics quality. It's the graphics menu that goes up to ultra, and it's the post-processing menu that goes up to high. Only high. Only lowly high. But here we are, back in the city of Novograd, running through the marketplace, with all the details turned on, except for NVIDIA Hairworks, because it's dumb. <laughs> and But before we were getting just under 60 frames per second running through all those peoples, 
Uh, there, we were getting, I think, just below 50, if I remember correctly. I don't know. I could run back through and find out for sure, but <laughs> why? Oh, we're going to see if we can find our way out of the city again. This is obviously not how I would play Witcher 3. I would be more than happy to play Witcher 3 with those settings we were just at, with the uh, graphics quality set to high and post-processing at high. This is getting a little bit lower than I would like. Escaping from the city of Novigrad now, do our frame rates climb to 60 frames per second at all times like they should? Mm, no, not quite. So yeah, I would definitely play this game normally using the settings that we were just at. Oh, there's 60 frames per second. There you are, old buddy, old pal. Hey, jump into the water now. Whee! Looking back at the city now, it doesn't look so intensive now, does it? No. Hey, that's Witcher 3. Let's move on to the next game. Up next, we are playing Overwatch. This is Ultra Details, the Ultra Details preset. Of course, like every other game, we are limited to a maximum of 60 FPS. So our temps are staying relatively cool. They're at... 80 or sub 80 and I am of course mercy as I always am the medic because I just think this is a good way to get a good uh, glimpse of the, of the, of the uh, yeah, I'm dead <laughs> I don't know what I was going on about about glimpses but hey we're just a little bit over 80 degrees right now a constant constant at 60 FPS in Ultra Details, this is the way that I would play uh, Overwatch, if I were going to play Overwatch on this PC at all times. Now we're in Overwatch and Extreme Details, or Epic, I think, I think it's what it's called, Epic Details? It's one step <laughs> above Ultra, and I think it's the highest Ultra, Ultra, the highest Overwatch can go, as far as graphics details are concerned. We're getting a super smooth 60 frames per second, still which is pretty darn nice. And how did I die? Uh, oh, I was snippered. Mm. I love it when I get sniped. I just, oh, I love it. I dwell on that. I, I'm gonna lose sleep now that I was just sniped like that. Losing sleep. Still, I'm not gonna lose sleep over how good these frame rates are. Because that was dumb of me. <laughs> but, yeah. Super smooth. Ultra good. Temps are good. The fans of the laptop are spooning. But uh, it's not overly loud. Again, I, I, I... Let me turn the speakers up on this thing. This is not even Mac... Okay, we're up to 66. As far as the uh, speaker volumes are concerned and totally drowning out the fans of this notebook. Absolutely just drowning them out. So, whoa, ho, ho. oh, oh, I'm, I'm the only one left, okay. Oh, oh what? Oh, the, they, they came after me. Hey guys, this has been playing games with the ASUS G14 ROG with the Ryzen 7 4800HS and GTX 1650. It's a fantastic laptop. It works pretty well, and it's small and portable, and it has great battery life. I I don't know why you wouldn't want to buy this. If you're looking for something around the $1,000 price range and just want something that can play games, and then if you do want something that can play games better, there are ways you can move up the food chain, so to speak, with the G14. You can get the RTX. 2060 instead of the plain old GTX 1650. And the Ryzen 9. Ryzen 9's available in this, dudes. The Ryzen 9, huh? Not a half bad deal. Hey, don't forget, uh, if you comment in the video, that really bumps me up in the search algorithm. Apparently comments are really good for that. So uh, ask a question, request another game for me to play. I do have access to X... <laughs> I do have access to Xbox Game Pass now. So if you guys want to see anything on that's available on Xbox Game Pass to play on the Asus G14, I'm probably going to have this laptop for another couple of weeks 
to make another couple of videos. So if you guys have any requests, let me know down below. Hey, thanks for watching, and you guys, have a good night.